All right, today's challenge is we are going to change the oil and the filter in a, what year is this, 2003? 2003. 2003 P32 workhorse chassis. You can see there it's got the 8.1 Vortec engine on it. Now this one doesn't have the Allison transmission. This has the GM transmission. And its transmission is a 4L85E. So this is what we're going to be doing today. I got the schematic out. I got a torque, our specs. We've already got our parts we need. We've got a new filter. We've got the new seal. Got the nice new rubber gasket instead of the cheapy cork gasket. So we're going to get started. Crawl under there and get the oil. Luckily this drain pan has a drain plug. That's a nice feature. So we'll get under there. We're going to drain the oil. We're going to catch the oil so we know exactly how much to put back in there. And another thing, thing I want to do is I'm going to open up the filter. Because in the past I've taken these apart. Uh, open up the filter and see metal or stuff in there. And it's, it's a good early warning sign. If you see some metal or debris, then you know to get it into a transmission shop. Hopefully we're not going to see that. It's been about, what, 50,000 miles since the last oil change? And RV has over 100, 100 and what? RV has 105, and it's been 50,000 since the last transmission right. filter. Good deal. So we'll see what kind of debris we pick up after 50,000 miles. So let's crawl under there and try not to get too dirty. All right, so the first thing we're doing, we just want to make sure before we get in here, we, we took the new gasket, mined it up against the oil pan, just to confirm we do have the right parts because you sure don't want to get into that and find out you got the wrong gasket and everything. So the gasket lines up with the bolt holes, so we're good to go. So we'll start uh, draining this oil out now. Okay, we've got a pan in place. We're going to try to catch this without making such a mess. Get the bolt loose. Try to grab that bolt before it falls in the pan. Make sure we're lined up. Are we up far enough? Yeah, we're up far yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. All right, here we're good. we go. There, there it goes. She's a coming out. All right. We got a lot of cardboard under here to help us. Actually, we're doing this in the middle of a campground. Don't tell nobody. We're trying to be kind of incognito about it. All right. We'll wait for that to drain, and then we'll work on the pan bolts. Uh, let's try to look at the condition of that oil. Hey, Mr. Ken. Hello there. How are you? Having a big time? Well, we just started. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Here's, here's the rag. Okay, just a, something to watch out for. Sometimes when you remove these, if they stick to the pan, they can tear. This one's still in good shape, but uh, it did not come with a new uh, gasket for the drain plug. So just be mindful of that when you pull the drain plug. And tools-wise, all you're going to need is a 15 millimeter socket for the drain plug. And... 10 millimeter socket for the pan bolts and uh, it was on a real tight so I had to get a half inch drive to get that broke loose didn't have quite enough oomph using my 3 8 drive okay so we've got the oil drained out at least out of the pan the pan's still good and tight so I went ahead and took my half inch drive ratchet and put the torque on it got it good and good and tight right now I do have a torque wrench I can follow up with the specs, but I kept, look, kept looking up, I kept getting different torque specs from different places on the web. So it kind of, I just went by the torque in my elbow. I've been doing this for a long time. I've got a pretty good torque wrench in my elbow. All right, here's, a, where's, a, where's my focus? Here we go. All right on the back here, we got one that's kind of a, all right, get some light here. Okay, here's the bolt's kind of tricky to get to because you got this frame rail. So I was able to get it loose. I put the socket on there, then took my extension. I was able to get in at, at an angle and kind of tilt it and get it loose. So just so you know, be aware. That one's kind of tight to get to. Uh, even a, a wobble joint might not even fit in there, but I was able to get it loose that way. And I've already broke all the other ones loose, all of the bolts. So I got, we got a little electric impact here to make quick work at it, out of it. We'll get the rest loose. All right, use these little tools. These little impacts are great for this kind of work. Get that one. Makes quick work of all these little bolts. Right on down. The tricky part is getting that pan to drop and not get a mess. That's always going to be the fun. So we're just going to leave four and then just carefully break it free 
and then I'll work it down from there. Uh, getting down to the nitty gritty, we've only got, you see the pan's nice and loose. So that, that was nice, we didn't have to beat and bang on it. I've got one bolt up front holding it and two in the rear. So I'm gonna let that loose and then we'll, hopefully we'll get this down. Here you go, Dave, you record this. See how it works. Can you see the see it in view? Yeah. Right, let's see if we get lucky here. So take this bolt out, that'll leave us just two. Where's the pan? Where's the plastic pan? It's up front here, but your bag for the I, bolts. Yeah. Here's the scary part. See how big a mess we're going to make. Alright, one last bolt. I'll try to ease this down and lay it across that cross member up there. Scary time, scary time. Okay. We did that part without making a crazy mess. We got, we got a little some dripping going on. I expected that. All right. Now if we can get it down to the ground. Nice and level. This is why the bit's still dripping. You still recording? Yep. Get my hand up from under it. There we go. So you get a lot of dripping after that thing. Things will both drip for hours. Alright, I need to get me some ratchet. Alright. That wasn't so awful bad. Alright. Alright, Dave, record. Alright, drop the filter out here. Hopefully, we won't get a big gush of oil. Come on, baby. It's a good tight fit. Man, there right, she went. Alright, we got that. Easy. Alright. Now. Alright, we got some getting that out. Okay. Stop. There you go, Dave. You're now recording. Okay. Alright, so all we gotta do with the big screwdriver go, get a little hammer, give it a little love tap to collapse it. Hopefully I'll get the pressure off of it. I don't know if that's enough or not. We'll try. There it went! And we didn't make a mess. Alright, now we'll put some oil on the put oil on the on the new one. When there we go. Alright, let's put this back in place. Get the most pretty brass hammer. Good. All right. New seal is in place. Easy peasy. All right. So now we're ready. We're, we're, we're gonna. Well, I guess we're ready for the new filter. Where's the new filter, Cam? I told you where it was on top of your. Uh, oh, there we go. All right. Remember a minute ago. All right. Brand new shiny filter. I'm gonna dip us a little, little, little oil on here. Can you see it? All right. Straight up. What keeps that from coming off and dropping down your pan? Oh, there she goes. All right. There we got it. All right. Now we're just going to clean the pan, clean the magnet, get a new gasket, and put it back together. This was an interesting comparison because we've got two red caps here. This is the new oil. That's how nice and red it is. This is the old oil. So that's 50,000 miles. So well, that's why they recommend you change your transmission fluid about every 30,000 miles. 50,000 may be pushing it. And he heavens forbid you got more than that. So uh, if you got your, especially these RV, or RV transmissions, you know, think how much of a, what we're asking this transmission to do on these, uh, you know, with it's all the heavy loads and hills and stuff, pulling the car, everything we 
we're asking it to do. So keep that oil changed. And in the pan looks pretty good. We got just a little bit of this fuzz, which is normal. I got, I got me some brake cleaner or starting fluid or if you got a little bit of gasoline, get the pan all cleaned up real good. So we're going to get all this shined up and cleaning, cleaned. And then I'm going to uh, cut open that oil filter here in a little bit, see what it look, looks like inside. Oh, Alright, so when you go do this job, go to Walmart, get you some brake parts cleaner. This is really good stuff because it'll, it'll quickly dilute that uh, oil residue, get everything good and clean. It dries real quick and you'll have a nice, nice clean oil pan because it evaporates really fast. Okay, this is why you want to open up your oil filter and see what you can see. Because uh, just because you don't find no metal in the bottom of the pan or the magnet doesn't mean there's not metal somewhere else. So you just take a pair of pliers, bend that lip around, then open up the filter and look what you see. We have metal. Now this is 100,000 miles. And remember this filter has only been in here for 50,000. So there's a pretty good chunk of metal. I don't know where it comes from, what it is. And there's, some, there's another piece. So... I won't let go of my finger. And you can see there's other little debris. So I'm not a transmission guy, but uh, at least you can put this in a Ziploc bag and show it to a transmission guy and see what they think. It's, it's operating and working fine, but that that's probably something you don't want to see. Don't know where that come from. Probably need to get a magnet. Let's make sure that's metal. Let's do that. Okay. Okay, let's just confirm this is steel. So here's our magnet. Everything's nice and clean. Uh, and okay, it, it is not a magnet. So what the heck is it? Uh, that's, that's not metal. So that's a good thing. But it's. But where did it come from? What is it? Uh, okay, so we did confirm we do have a little me little me metal here. See on the edge, that did pick up. So that, that's metal. But I don't think those big pieces are not metal. metal. I don't know what it is. Maybe a transmission guy will know. So that is metal. Mm -hmm. The little one. Yeah, the big one That's is not. That's not metal. There's a lot of little plastic things in there, though. Yeah. In the transmission. Oh, yeah. All right, so let me tell you a little story. Back, I had we had a 2001 Class A. It was a trail light. Class A RV, 24-footer. And I was just doing a thing just like this, changing oil, doing preventive maintenance, cut the filter open, and when I did, I found a, a long, flat spring in there. And I took it to my transmission guy, and he knew exactly what it was. It was like a one-way bearing, there's like three rollers, and one of the springs had failed, and said when the second one fails, then you lose all your gears. So luckily, I caught it in time, I was at home, I dropped the transmission myself, had it rebuilt, put it back in, and all is good. So it saved me a breakdown on the road. So doing this kind of stuff yourself, could save you a nightmare of a breakdown if you're on the road and had a transmission failure. But I think what we're going to do... We'll, look, we'll, at, look at how bendable it is. It's oh, just, it's very... Yeah. Just, it's, it's very, plastic. Yeah, so maybe a transmission guy will look at that and he'll say, oh, I know exactly what that is. Don't worry about it. So, anyways. But most likely he's going to look at me and go... That'll be $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this part I'm adding later. I've already did... The, the job got done about a week ago, but I kept this filter because I wanted to explain a little bit further. You see up close, see all the little bits of metal that's in there. And at first glance, you really don't notice it, but as it dried, you can start seeing more of it as it's been sitting here. So there's a pretty good piece. There's a good piece there. So that's why it's important to cut these filters open just to get an idea. I guess this is probably considered normal. What did I say? This has over 100,000 miles on it. And this, well, the transmission has over 100,000 miles. This filter has 50,000 miles on it. And I believe the recommended oil change interval on this transmission is around 30,000. And you can see the difference in the color of the oil. So it's one of those things we need to remember and take care of. But I wanted to show you again how this, how it works. Because you know, when you first look at your filter you may look at it like this oh it looks fine I don't see nothing in there it looks great that's why you need to bend them you know bend this metal back open them up you can see how it's made kind of like a sock because this part here is crimped so all the oil has to flow up into this pocket and it's trapped until it, until it flows out 
and then of course goes up the, up the pipe gets gets sucked back up through the transmission but you can see where all the debris gets gets pulled down here to the bottom but uh, I thought that was kind of interesting to kind of give you a heads up of the condition of your transmission so, and if you saw some big scary parts you know just take it to your local transmission guy and get their opinion and see what they what they consider normal I don't think this is very scary but you know if you had some big chunks in there or a lot of uh, clutch debris clutch disc debris then it might be a different story but I think for over 100,000 miles I think this looks pretty good but that's my opinion and I'm not a transmission guy but uh, maybe some of you watchers out there are and you can uh, educate me all right so reading the manual will tell you to put in you know it, uh, this what came out of it was Dextron 3 but you now you can put in Dextron 6 so it is backward compatible so if your dipstick says Dextron 3 don't stress for the 4L85E Dextron 6 is the way to go and we've made a, an executive decision this is the gasket we received uh, we don't like it so much the OEM gasket is reusable it's only got 50,000 miles on it there was absolutely no leaks which I just like the way it's made it's much stronger these tend to squish out so that's probably something to keep in mind if you're gonna do this job and you, you've got a lot of miles on it probably opt for the OEM gasket make sure it's just, this is really good hard gasket not these little because these seem like they tend to to crush out and maybe possibly leak a little bit more i feel a lot better about using this this heavy gasket here and like i said the manual did state this gasket is reusable so that's what we're going to do we're going to crawl back under there and uh, put her back together oh, and be be mindful you want to make sure all this is good and clean get all this dirt and grit off the that surface make sure it's perfectly clean before you put your gasket up in there you don't want no dirt crud between your uh, gasket and that uh, nice smooth surface. I was just noticing something. You see that flange? So that flange is all the way around that filter. That old filter did not have that flange on it. So maybe that's some of that plastic that we found up in the filter. Okay, so I think you said earlier we had the, the oil pan spotlessly clean. I know I should have wore gloves spraying that cleaner and stuff, so don't do like I do. Get you some gloves. Protect your hands from that spray. And got the pan and got all the screws in here just loosely started. So I'm just, I'll slowly torque them up, use my little impact to be kind of quick, then do a crisscross, and we'll look up the torque and get that set correctly. Yeah, that's what we're thinking about that. Yeah. Just sneak them up. Then we'll come back with a correct tool. Because these guys didn't hear, all you do is pull the plug. Yeah. I got a few more on the back side. I got to get a ratchet on. So according to the book, we came up with 18 Newton meters. So that's what we're doing. Going through. We're checking everything. Crisscross as we go. Because I've already done this once. Just double checking everything. There we go. So do this yourself and save yourself a bunch of money. Even if you have to invest in a few tools, the first time you do it, your tools will be paid for. You save yourself so much money. We're in good shape. So we're just ready to add oil. And then we'll show you what we did in order to get the exact amount of oil. That's another neat trick. You want to be sure to measure precisely how much oil you take out. It saves a lot of grief. All right, so while I'm under this P32 chassis, it's kind of been a long time. It's been, you know, it's gosh, 12 years since we had our P32. And because, but I was trying to look at stuff that's very familiar, familiar to our W24, because we got the 8.1 Vortec in it. You know, the exhaust looks the same, same uh, O2 sensors, all that's the same. I just kind of look, look, 
looking at the exhaust system, looks the same, same catalytic converter. So a lot, of, a lot of the components are very similar to the W24 as far as the basic engine until you get past the transmissions. You, you know, this doesn't have the Allison in it. But, uh, but it served him well over 100,000 miles. Pretty good. Look, got a leather workhorse. All right, let's get back on top. Okay, another wise thing to do, like we said, measure exactly how much oil comes out. So we put it back in these milk jugs, and we got it measured, so we've got about five quarts we took out, so we know exactly how much to put back in. Because all the Mac transmissions, man, it can be so easy to overfill one, and then that causes all kinds of other problems. You end up puking transmission fluid out the top of the transmission and causing you grief. So uh, that's a handy thing to do. Measure it precisely, so all we got to do is fill it back up five quarts and start it up and look for leaks. But we're getting the oil in there. Slow down. Three funnels. That's nuts. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. You get you a funnel with a long hose. But we're improvising because it's getting dark. Okay, move your... I moved so you wouldn't drink directly on me. So we got the oil in. It was kind of a pain, but at home, I've got a setup. I've got me a, a funnel where I've got a long, clear hose that'll fit in there, and I bring it out, and I hook the funnel to the wiper arm. So it makes it real easy just to pour it right in, and I can watch it and make sure it doesn't overfill. So if you're going to take on this project, make sure you got a funnel set up that you can uh, make work. This is a little bit more difficult than most of them because it's way back in there. Most of them come out here a little bit farther and a little bit lower to deal with. So, and also, this, we've done had it running, ran it through all the gears. Everything's good, no drips. Everything looks like we've done a good job, so there you go. So now you know what to do. Thanks for watching, have a blessed day. See you, bye.